Yo, good afternoon, viewers of YouTube. My name's Tyler Swope of Chico Crypto, and welcome to another episode of Breaking Down the Blockchain. Or should I say, Smart Economy. That on the tower. Oh, by the way, I got myself a Chico Crypto shirt. Chico Crypto logo on the back. You guys want to purchase one check out my website or something so this has been on my list to talk about since it was released last week everyone knows who the city of zion is they are the independent developer group who is focused on the progress of the neo smart economy through development on the neo blockchain they do this through community support competitions and in-house development of upgrades to the neo blockchain well a few months back City of Zion sent out a bounty for open source software that will benefit the community and the NEO smart economy. The first bounty was for consensus improvements to the DBFT protocol used on NEO. So today I would like to take a look into these improvements as well as break down exactly what a delegated Byzantine fault tolerance is. So the easiest way to understand the improvements is to begin understanding DBFT. As we know, De Hongfei and Eric Zhang came up with DBFT after seeing the inefficiencies of both proof-of-work consensus and proof-of-stake consensus. With DBFT, we are trying to determine the true outcome of a vote, which leads to the Byzantine generals problem. So imagine 12 generals for the Byzantine Empire have encircled the city of Rome with their armies. In order to successfully overthrow Rome, the generals must attack or retreat in unison. If any general acts opposite of the consensus decision, the armies will be rooted and defeated. The decision to attack or retreat is put to a vote, and whichever receives greater than 50% of the vote is what the generals agree to do. This has its flaws because any number of generals could be bribed to betray the Byzantine Empire. There is also improperly functioning generals, making the wrong decisions, and since the generals are in different geographic regions, couriers carrying the votes could be bribed or even just deliver the completely wrong message. So this Byzantine scenario is an analogy for the problem faced by distributed computing systems. How is consensus reached when faced with bad actors? Neo DBFT solved this and allowed for better scaling and performance when compared with existing solutions such as POW or POS. So how does DBFT work? So say we have a country called Neo. Every citizen or Neo holder in the country is given the right to vote who will be their leader, also called a delegate. These delegates make the laws of the country. If the citizens disagree with how a delegate voted on the law, they can vote for a new delegate next time. The citizens tell the delegates what will make them happy, and every delegate must keep up with the demands of the citizens, and they will be added up to pass laws aimed at making the citizens happy. When it's time to pass a law, a speaker is randomly assigned from the group of delegates. They propose the law based off the demands of the citizens. The law is then passed back to the delegates for a vote. If 66% or above of the delegates agree with the law, then it is passed and finalized. If less than 66% are in agreement, a new speaker is randomly selected and the process starts over until consensus is reached. So, for example, you have a dishonest speaker who sends correct info A to one delegate and wrong info B to others. The middle delegate and the right delegate would not calculate the same consensus as the dishonest speaker and cannot verify the transaction. The middle delegate and the right delegate would not calculate the same consensus as a dishonest speaker and could not verify the speaker's law, resulting in two rejections of the law. The left delegate, who has sent accurate information A, would confirm, resulting in just one confirmation. The proposal would be rejected because it didn't get 66% consensus. Now, let's say you have a dishonest delegate. This would actually lead to a validation of the law proposed by the speaker. The honest delegates, the left and middle, would be able to verify the honest speaker's proposal, A, and thus achieve 66% consensus. The delegates could also determine if the speaker lied to the right node or if the right node was dishonest. This is guiding voters' decisions about which delegate is trustworthy and who to vote for. Now that we have a general understanding of DBFT, let's take a look at the improvements of the BFT consensus worked on by the community. The winner of the bounty was Anthony de Mulemeester, aka AnthDM, 
who was able to implement the asynchronous consensus called Honey Badger BFT. HBFT is a variation of BFT, and it guarantees the liveliness of the network even when the nodes are behaving faulty. The algorithm contains four main protocols, which were implemented into modular building blocks. These are reliable broadcast algorithm, the Byzantine binary agreement, the asynchronous common subset, and the Honey Badger protocol. With this, it guarantees that all good nodes output the same set of transactions in each epoch. This makes it really interesting as we don't need to elect new leaders. The network can keep committing transactions instead of wasting time and bandwidth on leader elections. The nodes could keep track of the first output in a certain epoch by one of the consensus nodes and use that to record into a new block, ignoring identical sets in the same epoch. Let's go through a transaction flow. First, one node receives a new transaction from a client. Second, the transaction will feed into the transaction verification worker pool where a random worker will pick it up and verify the transaction. Third, after verification, the transaction is inserted into the meme pool of the node and pushed on the top of the HBFT buffer. Fourth, the HBFT engine will propose a random batch transaction from its buffer. Fifth, the node will receive the output from the HBFT engine. If the transaction is in the meme pool, it can be directly committed to the transaction. Otherwise, we need to perform verification and feed this transaction into the transaction worker pool. After verification, the transaction can be committed and appended to the commit log. Six, all good and honest nodes will end up with the same commit log. So through testing and simulation, it was found that this consensus is good for small to medium sized networks. Adding more nodes will slow it down, but this can be countered by increasing batch size. This consensus will not scale infinitely, but can increase transaction speed up to 10,000 transactions per second with no more 10 plus minute block delays. The runner up for the bounty consensus improvement was Oleg Smirnov, and he implemented the fast BFT. This is the world's first open source fast BFT implementation on a blockchain. Fast BFT is an extremely fast and scalable protocol that relies on novel message aggregation techniques that combine hardware based trusted execution environments with secret sharing primitives. Oleg combines this technique with other optimizations, including optimistic execution, tree topology, and failure detections. So let's go through the consensus. First, there is pre-processing phase, and it's not a direct part of consensus. The primary replica distributes generated secrets, splitting them into shares among replicas. It can be proactive and distribute as much as it anticipates upcoming consensuses. Later, those secret shares will be propagated up through the replica tree, and the primary can reconstruct the secret for commit and replay phases. So the first phase of consensus is during the prepare phase and the primary replica binds every secret to the block in the consensus. The second part is the commit phase and the active replicas reveal their secret shares to its parent replica. Upon receiving all secret shares and restoring the secret, the primary replica commits the block to the blockchain. The last step of this phase is a change propagation among the active replicas. The final phase is the reply phase, and this is where the active replicas are trying to add the block to their local blockchain copies. If the result of this operation is the same that was reported by the primary replicas, then the active replicas reveal their new secret shares back to the primary replica through their parents. This is a similar process that took place in the commit phase, but it's just a tad different. In experiments and testing with differing block sizes up to 10,000 megabits and parallel branches, the algorithm was able to scale to 239,257 transactions per second. With keeping the block size at 100 megabits and increasing the replica count, they're able to scale to a max of 6,227 transactions per second. Oleg concluded that fast BFT has the potential to break 10,000 transactions per second, although if you want to reach 100,000 plus, you would need a block size upgrade, as shown from the testing. Well, viewers, as you can see, NEO and the Smart Economy has multiple consensus algorithms at their disposal, delegated Byzantine Fault Tolerance, Honey Badger BFT, and now Fast BFT. And these are all modular, ready to be built into dApps. It's going to be very interesting coming up soon with all the new consensus models and projects. 
but I have a feeling Neo's DBFT and variations are going to be the ones that make it. Cheers. See you tomorrow.